Welcome to the Spotlight segment. This is a segment dedicated to interviews of developers or interesting happenings in the world of Android. And now for this episode, here's your Spotlight. We now move on to the next segment. And of course, we're talking about the big elephant in the room. We're talking about Google I.O. 2024. Guys, let's talk about Google I.O. 2024. You know, just like we said last week, it was all going to be about AI. And indeed, it was the AI mentioned 120 times during the keynote. And then uh, Sundar Pichai added one more. So 121 mentions of the word AI. Let's talk about Google I.O. 2024 or Google AI 2024, which one is it, uh, Austin? It's Google AI, AIO 2024. But some AI things in this are really powerful. The first thing I like to talk about is LM Notebook and Audio, where, you know, they demo learning science and physics using examples as question answers wherein they joined the conversation. So there was this developer and his son joining the conversation where they were talking about basketball exam examination or examples. The next big powerful thing in this is Deep Minds, which has a lot of uh, inven inventions like videos and you can import videos and ask about that. You can ask what is going on in the images and you can also import them. Gemini 1.5 Pro was released with 2 million tokens. So that is a big, like, uh, big number of APIs that can be imported. 2 million tokens is a long list of APIs or tokens that developers can use to build their apps. Then there was some PPUs. CPUs, GPUs announced in the AI or Google I.O. 2024. And this is the nice thing. They have demoed a nice feature in Android Gemini where you can ask PDF. Like you can load 1,500 pages of PDF and you can ask what is on in this PDF. Like it will give you a nice summary or nice highlight of is the whole PDF in let's say one or two pages, or it can if you if you want to ask it what image is in this PDF or which part of the PDF is about uh, some science topic, then it will ask it'll answer you that. So you don't need to keep browsing the whole PDF searching for something. The next thing is reg regarding accessibility where talkback and image description, which uses Gemini again. So that is a good thing about uh, Gemini. It's really become powerful. This amount of sessions that were on Gemini was, was like huge from building apps to debugging code to everything. And then there was this call on the phone, which demoed a warning of scam call. So. That is going to be very nice for the senior citizens and those who are not much educated in scams or phishing and all those other things where you get warning when the audio is processed locally on your phone and you get notification saying this call may be a scam to so take care. And much, much more in the I.O., which, which is mostly uh, towards development. One place where IO saved me is, or AI saved me, is when my boss wanted me to submit a commit report to the office. So I'm in charge of building Android apps with my team. We built the Archdiocese of Bombay app, and then I had to submit a commit report. So when which commit was submitted by my team so that updates can be rolled or we could see rolling in of updates systematically. So what I had to do is I had to import the whole library and it gave me a commit date by date report 
of when which committee was supported so i was hugely saved by germany and also that was a really fascinating thing that it took that so long library and tried out so all these features can be tried out in an android ai studio you know talking about that ai uh, asuna no you are the king of ai here you're so much into this now when they mentioned that talk back in that uh keynote i almost fell out of my chair because this is the very first time we ever heard anything about uh talk back yeah usually they have other sessions but not in the keynote and so i mean kudos to google uh for talking about talk back during the opening keynote this is something that has never happened this is the very first time that we heard such a thing and i was excited about it and then um another thing that you know pichai <laughs> talked about i think is having things getting returned for you automatically say john you are not buy a lot of crap from amazon <laughs> spamming amazon and returning stuff uh oh gosh you could have that uh, ai you know try to fill out stuff for you so you don't have to go through all that manual process of uh doing the stuff to return so i think that we have a lot of good stuff coming um for us within the ai if you are here in the states i already got google saying i could try it uh, free for 2 months you know the ai 1.5 pro and i haven't activated any of that but uh the pricing also is nice i mean some of them are as cheap as like 35 cents and some of them like $3 a month so i think google actually has a good pricing going on for this ai thing if one wants to take advantage of it I missed the whole segment on the workspace Google workspace where they have made it really really powerful like if you you can search your emails with let's say you are doing a house repairing project and you are roofing so you can search more than one contractor you can get their uh, gemini to compare the price and make it list give you a summary and will do that and you can keep up with your children's emails like give you a highlight and you can plan up travel vacations and itineraries depending on gmail and you can also ask it questions like when the doors will open for the next game so you don't need to open gmail go to that email read it and find out this will do it in a couple of steps so it's really for workspace they have really bought up the game in ai and ai is going to smart and android also in the future i want to talk about two things regarding the new developments first of all the addition of gemini in google stock back i hope that this time google will not make it exclusive to the united states or just few countries like it does usually and i hope that other parts of the world will get it not after 3 years or 4 years just to get it immediately when with with the with the united states and the other countries so i hope that this time they will not do a drunk like they like like what they do usually this is the first thing <laughs> <laughs> i hear you my dear uh, no i think this one though it uh, I hope I'm I'm not wrong but I would like to believe that it will be for everybody it better be <laughs> Let's see <laughs> And the second thing is related to uh GPT because you know before Google IO there was the GPT announcement and uh, you know that it's a war currently it's just announcing this then this com- the other company will announce that and Google is usually trying to to play the catch up game so the yeah, gpt 40 was announced this week and it is something really powerful it's able to be much faster than the 4 turbo and it's able to also um interact by voice much better than it used to be it's now more um like it's able to to interact via speech uh using like better um interactions better tones it can change its tone it, it can sing and and to be honest i'm more 
like I'm a person who trusts GPT's ability more than Gemini because Gemini wasn't able to show its uh, capabilities as it should. And it was like all of the time we were, we were just feeling like Gemini is just something that is trying to play the catch up and it wasn't able at all to convince, to convince I think, the people who tested it compared to what GPT was able to do. Yeah, Gemini is improving. However, I think that GPT is still the king. So after uh, the AI, when AIO, or Google I.O. Uh, came, that time Gem Gemini was re really up upgraded or upload, uh, updated, I should say. That now you should find the uh, real improvements as it rolls out. The rollout is very fast. It's rolling out to many countries in the world very fast, but some parts are yet to roll out. They're saying by the end of September, October, Gemini will completely roll out to all the countries in the world. So that time you can test. It's mostly for developers, though. It's very... The, the usage for users can only come in workspace, Google search, and so on. You can't, uh, unless you are coding or doing something, then you can make the most use of it. Or if you are uh, doing something with LM notebook, you can import audios, videos, ask it what, what is in the image. And you can also prepare videos with it. That is Google v Deep Video or VED, where you can give it like prompts and it will prepare the video for you. It will take aerial shots if you want. And whatever you want to prompt it, it will prepare the instructional videos for you and give it the time that uh, it needs for the video. Oh, and, and I, wanna, I wanna add something, just one thing regarding accessibility and Gemini. Well, GPT-40, is going to be integrated in, in uh, VMIs. And I think that they started to integrate it in the images description. I didn't test yet, but I think that they did it. And uh, in the, in the, on the other hand, we have Google, which is able to add or integrate Gemini's ability in Lookout. Like it's possible for Lookout to have image descriptions to add maybe the ability to have real-time description like you have a conversation with the, uh, with, the, with, the with Lookout and it, it will tell you exactly what's in front of you and you can just have a conversation, which is still not announced yet. And I don't know if they have any plan for that. So also I think that they should like try to do something in this regard if they want to really integrate the, GP, the Gemini thing more into accessibility and into the lives of blind users. The Lookout one is in beta. That's what they said. So, you know, uh, if one can join the beta, uh, that's the find feature that Google rolled out. Uh, so that is available, but it's in beta. So uh, like you said, Karen, you know, it can tell you what's in front of you and things like that. You know, my whole idea about this, I'm excited about it. And I hope that developers and also like people like Google and others also will take this opportunity to give us uh, accessibility needs that we have been needing for a while. And when we talk about this, I'm constantly thinking about text-to-speech, uh, Karen. You and I love that text-to-speech. I don't know why we're not getting with all this powerful AI stuff. How come it is that we're not getting more and more uh, text-to-speech, you know, system-wide text-to-speech services on our, com on our phones and computers and things like that? And I want to see that. I want to see people taking advantage of that. And I don't know why no one ever thinks of these things it kind of just bothers my mind. Yeah, I agree. I think it rubs me the wrong way when they do all of these demonstrations to show how incredible this thing is. And it's like they they have they can point to things and say, What is this? Right. And they can say, Where did I leave my glasses? And it says, Oh, there it was on the table by the Apple. But yet, you know, they can put all this together for a demonstration to show off how smart. 
Gemini is, but why can't I open Lookout, just scan the room with my phone, just move it from left to right and say, where are my, where did I sit this object? You know, if they're showing us that it can do this stuff, but you know, where is it? Why can't we use it? Because it would benefit us the most. Like, yeah, it looks cool in a demonstration, but where is it going to be the most helpful? It's going to be the most helpful for us. So hopefully they roll this stuff out to look out or something similar soon. Yeah, so that will be in the find, uh, the find feature that is in the beta. So, uh, for example, I want to go into the bathroom and I want to find where the stall is and things like that. So I should be able to uh, use that. Because one of the things that we've been complaining about with Lookout is to have that ability, capability, John, of uh, getting uh, pictures. You know, I don't want to import a picture. I want to use it to, you know, see things or, you know, even take pictures right in and there from within Lookout. And I think that's what they're uh, implementing in this beta. So uh, some of the needs or wants that we want, I think they are becoming reality. But like I said, I want to see more and more because I think if there's any group of people that's constantly being left behind, it is us. And when I say us, I'm talking about those of us within the uh, disability communities, be it the blind or whatever. We're constantly behind. And uh, of course, also, there's something about maps, but that has to do with people in wheelchair. Of course, I'm glad they have stuff for them as well, because I think most of the time we're too selfish looking out for ourselves only, just like uh, my boy there, um, uh, Sally was looking for something. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> that self thing is always there. And frankly, it's the thing that all of us do. And when I look at these capabilities, all that comes to my mind, of course, is my part of disability, which is blindness. And so um, I'm glad they are doing this for other people as well and you know, using your face or using your eyes uh, to do things on the screen. These are very important things as well. So I'm glad we have that because there are some people that that are out there that can't move any of their limbs. And if they can use their eyes to do things with, I think this is also a beautiful thing. I am a bit fear for YouTube creators because if you can create videos using Google's video pro, uh, project, you can easily make videos and upload them to YouTube. So I don't know. There's going to be very tough competition in future for the creators. 